War is cruel and full of uncertainty, so elite military leaders must possess a special kind of leadership to cleverly apply the rules of warfare, be flexible and adaptable on the battlefield, and avoid being stubborn. Sun Tzu, in The Art of War, specifically pointed out the concept of five dangers, highlighting the five major character flaws that high-end military personnel should avoid. A series of classic historical military examples from ancient to modern times confirms the brilliance of Sun Tzu's insights. But do Sun Tzu's views truly hold such magic? How did the battlefield practices with these five character flaws change the course of history? In this video, I will start discussing Sun Tzu's five dangers, and his original words are as follows, there are five dangerous faults which may affect a general, one, recklessness, which leads to destruction, two, cowardice, which leads to capture, three, a hasty temper, which can be provoked by insults, four, a delicacy of honor which is sensitive to shame, five, over solicitude for his men, which exposes him to worry and trouble. Now, let me share my understanding of these five dangers. Fourth danger, a delicacy of honor which is sensitive to shame. Sun Tzu warns us not to be obsessed with self-esteem and face-saving. While it's natural to have self-esteem, it shouldn't turn into narcissism. If high-ranking military officials become excessively self-centered and care too much about how they appear in the eyes of others, it can be dangerous and may lead their soldiers to death. As you know, Hitler was an extremely narcissistic individual. For instance, in late February 1942, the CIA submitted a report to President Roosevelt titled Character Traits and Analysis of Hitler, which discussed eight major habits of Hitler's daily life. After collecting these habits, Roosevelt assembled a team of top psychologists across America to analyze the personality flaws behind Hitler. One of Hitler's significant habits was plastic surgery. He had a particular fondness for his nose because according to Nazi racial theories, Germanic people were supposed to have prominent noses, which represented bravery and confidence. However, fate was not on his side as his nose didn't meet the ideal. This contradicted his theory, leading him to decide on undergoing plastic surgery. However, this decision presented another problem. In the Europe of that time, Christian culture prohibited plastic surgery. If the public found out that their leader's nose was heightened through surgery, it would diminish Hitler's authority in the eyes of the Nazi populace. To counter this, Hitler devised the gradual nose heightening technique. He underwent multiple surgeries to gradually raise his nose, keeping the changes subtle enough so the public wouldn't notice until his nose had become higher. Another of Hitler's habits was never wearing short sleeves, even in summer. His muscles were underdeveloped from a young age, and by the time he became the ruler, he was over fifty, and his muscles had become more flaccid. As a national leader, whether his muscles were developed or not didn't matter, but Hitler's physique was a state secret. He had someone specifically assigned to bathe him, and no one was allowed to leak any information about his physique under the penalty of death. These two examples show that Hitler's psychological vanity reached extremes. Would he genuinely accept others' opinions with an open mind? Throughout the war, German generals often received orders like, this is the Führer's decision, and it cannot be changed, even if it was wrong. Consequently, his soldiers repeatedly paid the price for his erroneous decisions. Hitler's excessive vanity and self-obsession didn't demonstrate inner strength but rather fear and weakness. For high-ranking military personnel, having such character flaws, could they have a positive outcome? Fifth danger, over-solicitude for his men, which exposes him to worry and trouble. Sun Tzu warns us not to have feminine compassion, as a leader, you must make decisive decisions when necessary, without overthinking which would only lead to trouble. There are two famous cases of feminine compassion in Chinese history. One is Duke Xiang of Song, whom I discussed in a previous video. During the enemy's river crossing, 
he missed the two best opportunities for military strikes, the th half-cross and backwater attack, waiting until the enemy was fully prepared to engage in battle, ultimately leading to defeat due to adhering to the noble customs of the Zhou dynasty. The other case is from the Hongmen Banquet, hosted by Xiang Yu. If Xiang Yu had killed Liu Bang during the banquet, history might have been rewritten. However, he refused, saying, Liu Bang does not have the intention to rebel against me. I am stronger than him, and he's twenty-four years older than me. If I kill an old man, wouldn't I be ridiculed by the world? His foster father Fan Zheng told him, you are not worthy of cooperation. The one who will take away your world will be Liu Bang. Just wait and see. History indeed proved Fan Zheng's prophecy. So, one must not have feminine compassion, the ultimate goal on the battlefield is victory, and one must have the quality of making swift decisions, without excessive worries, leading to the loss of the best opportunities. Let me provide another real-life example. There's a famous Chinese-American entrepreneur, Wang An, who had a significant experience when he was six years old. One day, a little sparrow accidentally landed on his shoulder. The child wanted to take care of it, but he hesitated because he knew his mother didn't like pets. After much deliberation, he finally made up his mind, placing the bird outside the door and trying to convince his mother to let him keep it. His mother initially disagreed, but he persisted relentlessly until she finally relented. However, when he excitedly returned to get the bird, he found that it had been eaten by a cat. This incident had a profound impact on Wang An, and later, when he became successful, he used this case to tell everyone that they must make decisive decisions in life and not hesitate. If you are certain about something, go for it. In summary, the five danger according to Sun Tzu's teachings teach us to be flexible and not stubborn, must have calmness and open-mindedness, along with resolute determination and clear judgment. In the next video, I will share my perspective on Sun Tzu's famous saying, all warfare is based on deception. If you find this video helpful, please click the subscribe and like buttons and hit the notification bell to receive timely updates on the latest videos from this channel. If you're interested in the series on Sun Tzu's Art of War, you can watch my previous episodes. Thank you, everyone.